hello all. We hope you've all had a good week. So we're going to do another video for you today. Today we are going to use, um, where are we? Let's bring these up so you can see what we're talking about. Falling flowers, feathered flourishes, stamp sets. Um, we're going to need the sentiments from our mini sentiment set and some clean colour pens and distress oxides. So let's bring you in so that you can, we can show you these products properly. Far too many buttons to push on these screens these days. Okay, so here we go. So the sentiment I've used, but you can put whatever sentiment, but the one I've particularly used is from our mini sentiment set. This is one of our 4 dollars sets. Then I've the main topper we're using today is our falling flowers. And then we're also using feathered flourishes. These are both our 7 dollars sets. Um, so roughly A6, which is roughly six by four. We're also using Distress Oxides, Infestive Berries, Squeeze Lemonade, Picked Raspberry, Twisted Citron, and Carved Pumpkin. We're using Versafine Onyx Black with the Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. We're also using our Sticky Glue, which comes in the 120ml or the 30ml. And Clean Colour Pens in, here we go, Wine Red, Light Pink, um, mid green, pale green, yellow and scarlet red. So they're the clean colours we're using. I'll just pop these up here out of my out of the way for a minute so I can show you. Um, again we've been asked about the large foam pads that you see me using when I'm doing the demos, that this is the reel of foam pads. Obviously, this is my used reel, um, so it, it fills out the whole sheet. You get 1600 foam pads in here. They are 25 mil by 25 mil by two mil, so they're two mil thick, 25 mil or two and a half inch square. So we're looking at that sort of size, and they are fab, really super sticky, and they last forever. Um, so they're available on our website. If they are out of stock, we always have them as pre-order, so they will be coming your way. So don't panic. The paper, or oh, the card we're making today, as I said, I've used one of the sentiments and I've just stamped and embossed that ahead of time so that it, the job's done. So whatever size your sentiment is, you need to cut your paper to fit that. Um, we've got an eight by eight card. We've got black square, which is seven and a half inch square. A white square which is seven and a quarter inch and we've got some black cardstock which is three and a half by six inches and then some watercolor cardstock um, and I do color uh, use the smooth side there's a textured side a slightly more textured side and a smooth side to the, the um, watercolor card so I do tend to go for the smoother of the two sizes but that's all the cardstock you need for today so we are going to start out by making our background using our Feathered Flourishes stamp. So you get three on the set. Let me just bring this back in quickly. So you get three individual flourishes on here. Um, they're quite a nice size, rough, I don't know, what are they? Three inches probably, from maybe three and a half inch square. We can work this out, look. Yeah, about three and a half inch square. A three and a half inch in, at the longest points, roughly. All of them are about that. So that's quite a nice size to use. So let's get started. Let's pop these out of the way for a moment and we will get going. So I'm just again going to make a background so that we colour coordinate, which is hence we're using those these colours with the colours we've got. And you're just going to randomly stamp these wherever you fancy. Um, for this they are quite a large stamp, but it works really well because it fills your card quite quickly. Um, so don't be tempted, if you want to fit all the colours on there, don't be tempted to do like five of each in each colour because you're not going to fit them on your piece of paper. So think about that when you're stamping them out. I try and be really, really good and keep it as tidy as I can when I'm doing this, but I'm never very good at it. Again, as I say, just random parts of the stamp, maybe the whole stamp in sections, but you don't have to use, and just be careful not to use your fingers on there when you've got ink on your fingers. We'll cover that up with a flourish in a minute. 
Um, let's go in with one of these ones. And we are filling in. I tend to try and fill in the full card. And I'm going to come into the middle as well. And then it doesn't matter. I can position my image then on there wherever I fancy when I come to putting it together. I'm going to take another large of the pink and pop that. Where am I going to go with that? Because it's going to have to go up here, I think. Because I don't want too many pinks close together. Just wipe those over really lightly with a wet wipe because I'm going to go back in and use them on my ink pads again. So. I don't want them to be too wet. So squeeze lemonade. And it doesn't matter if you miss when you're inking these up or if it overlaps or because you're just making a decorative background. It doesn't have to be perfect, which is the nice thing about these. When you're making your own backgrounds, it can be whatever you want it to be. nearly there. I'm just go in with some festive berries. Actually no, I'm not going to do it on the big one. I'm going to go in with one of the slightly smaller flourishes now. Pop that to one side a second. I'll go in with this one. And don't drop your ink pad all over your table. Try again. like these flourishes they're just quite delicate and they pick up the detail of the they're called feathers flourishes because if you look they've got little feathers on the ends of the flourish so they pick those up quite nicely and then I just want a little bit of red down here might pop some orange in can't do orange because I've got orange there don't really want another big pink one in there, but we might have to do another big pink one though. What do you think? Let's go with a big pink one. And fill that gap in. As I said, oh, we're going to end up with an orange one after all of that. No, we're not. We're going to clean that off and have a pink one. I wasn't concentrating. As you see, I break all the rules when it comes to looking after my stamps. In fact, most of the time they probably stay black until I'm putting them on the telly, and then I'll give them a clean. So we'll just pop that one in there. And there we go, we've pretty much filled that whole card up, whole piece of cardstock up there. So I'm just gonna pop these stamps out of my way, because if you could see the muddle that I've just managed to put myself into on here, yeah, it's not what I should be doing when I'm trying to make it look good. <laughs> so that is the basic background. You don't have to be all perfect, doesn't have to be prim and proper, doesn't matter if they overlap. Um, that's just the background done. So as I've said before, we're going to just layer these two up quickly. Using the sticky glue because it gives me that wiggle room that I need. You can probably hear my dog wandering around, so if you hear a bark, I apologise now. She gets in a little bit of a panic if she's left on her own for too long. So we try and do it that she doesn't realise she's on her own. <laughs> so there we go, just layer that one up and pop it to one side. It just means you cut your cardstock down. So now we're going to work on these. We're going to just use the white cardstock at the moment. Pick the smoother of the two sides, whichever one, some of the watercolour papers, it's really obvious which is the smoother side, others it's not so obvious. So just pick whichever one you're happy to use. And this is how my stamps are usually kept, nice and black. <laughs> um, so this is the Falling Flowers. We're going to take the Versafine Onyx Black. And there's some really solid pieces on this stamp. So 
so make sure you put plenty of ink on here spend a minute or two just making sure you've inked this stamp up to an, within an inch of its life plenty of ink I'm not pressing really hard I'm just putting lots and lots of little light taps on there position this hopefully roughly in the middle press it down again where those solid black parts of the stamp are make sure you give those a little bit of extra attention you really want to make sure that that paper's absorbed the ink while that's going I'm just going to undo the lid of my embossing powder so we're ready to go before I lift this off here and then we're going to lift off and get the powder on there as quickly as possible. And then we we'll just tap the excess off. Don't give it that good fl little, little flick that you're told to do with embossing powders. Just light tap to take the excess off because the Versafine and embossing powders are not the best of friends. I'm just going to pick up all that that I dropped there, put that back in. Great, it's not, want not. Now, this is watercolour card, so it takes a little bit longer to heat when we emboss it because it's thicker. It takes a little bit longer for the heat to get through. And as I, you've heard me mention before, I heat from underneath when it's with the Versafine, just because it gives the embossing powder a better chance of sticking so bear with me You've got to get your heat gun really hot before you start paper's still warm I just give it a little bit of a wiggle around just to try and keep that as flat as possible because your paper will warp slightly from the heat gun okay now we're going to go in with our clean color pens so let's get started so we will start with our pink and red so this is wine red and light pink I'm going to start at the base here with the, the wine red I always have an, a piece of kitchen paper available because it will pick up that red quite quickly and I want it to go into pink don't want it to be solid that real real red color now I could do with a little bit more of that wine red at the bottom so I'm just going to go back in with a bit more red and pull that in a little bit more Take the red off the brush and work my way up. Let me do that on each petal. And I do it one petal at a time. The reason to do that I do that is it means the ink doesn't dry too fast and it gives you time to, to work that blend. red off there and go through to the pink. Okay. 
So lay the darker colour down at the bottom and work it up. And I use circular motions, makes it a little bit easier to get that blend in there. And the final red, and take the pink out. Take that red off the brush and bring it through to the pink. So there is our pink ones done. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but I've gone slightly over the edge right down here. Can you see that? Now I know it's there, so that's gonna bug me. So I've just got a clean water brush and I'm just gonna go in and try and pick some of that up. It doesn't always work, but I'm gonna try. And if nothing else, it just blends it out. So it's not so obvious that it's there. Make sure my brush is clean each time. we go. So pretty much gone. Yeah. Can't really see that there on the edge now. So we're then going to do our smaller flower and I'm going to do this in, um, what colours have we got here did I say? Scarlet red and yellow. Yeah, scarlet red. So we're going to lay a little bit of colour down and you really only need a really small amount on this one. Take your, exit, your red off the end of your yellow and blend that through to yellow. Because they're not a very big petal, you don't need very much of the darker colour to take this through. And through to yellow. And one thing I didn't mention, and because we're going to go over this flower now with my hand, I'm just going to blot this to make sure that any of the ink that may have been left there or that sat on top of the... And you see how much just came off that? And that would have smudged so badly all over this if I'd have kept going. Um, so make sure you blot the flowers if you're going to be taking your hand over other colours that you've just coloured. They take a little while to dry and where the embossing powder is, it's caused built up a resist. So it will smudge a good one. And then the final one, bring that through, take the orange or red off the end of your brush and take that through to yellow. So that's those ones done. I can't believe we're 18 minutes into this already. So now we're gonna just color this leaf in here so I'm going to lay down some of this one is mid green and then I'm going to go all over with the, uh, the, the pale, this is pale green. Then I'm going to go back in with the mid green, a little bit further in this time and blend all the way across. I love this mid green, it really does kind of just give you that little edge to make that leaf pop. And I might even take a little bit more in there. Clean my petal one up. And then I'm just going to find a bit that I haven't soaked in paper, in water, and just blot those. I'm gonna take three of the strong color, the lighter colors and I'm just going to go in on these little dots and color them in just to take the color up through the image otherwise it's quite bold in the middle there and not so much anywhere else just in these little bubbles that are hollow There we go. 
Can you see where I just went in those? I'm going to pop a couple of gems in the centre of my flower. Or flowers, should I say. And that's your topper done. I'll just block those ones I did at the top there so we don't cause a problem. And then we're just going to lay our topper or glue our topper onto our layer. What am I doing? It's gone back of this one and then it will go where we want it to be, not where we're guessing it's going to be. Just to make sure that we haven't smudged anything, I'm just going to pop my cloth over there to push that down rather than my piece of kitchen roll rather than use my fingers to make sure that's stuck so we don't smudge anything. There we go, there's our topper, and we're going to bring this all back in together now. I'm going to pop some foam pads on the back of this. I pop them there we go. a second I'm just going to stick this down first so once we've stuck this down we can then actually I'm going to turn that around because I know how I'm going to lay my card out and I know which bit I wanted to hide and it will make sense in a minute. Let's do this. It's moving around on me. We're roughly there. And then we'll pop a little bit of glue on the back of these foam pads, which I know sounds bizarre. Um, it just gives us a little bit of wiggle room with these because they are so super, super sticky. Um, it gives you the height which we want, but you have only one chance with them unless you pop some glue on the back. Otherwise, once it hits that deck, that's where it's staying. So we're going to pop that on there. And we're going to pop the sentiment. I think I'll put a, foam, a couple of foam pads on the back of the sentiment too, just to lift that up. And there we have it. One really bright, lovely card you can give to anybody. Whatever sentiment you pop on there or whatever colours you use can be make this card into anything you would like it to be for. So I'll just run through quickly what we've used again so that you know. Actually, no, I'll give you a sneak peek on a couple of other samples. There is only a couple for me to show you today. Um, so this is using... The falling flowers again with the brick wall stencil behind and this one is using falling flowers with the mesh stencil behind um, so we'll pop back to this one there's far too many things for me to be hitting buttons on so we've got um, mini sentiments which has have a wonderful day birthday wishes with love and congratulations on this is the feathered flourishes set roughly about three inches long each one of these and obviously you get the three individual stamps on there and then falling flowers which is one large stamp roughly about six by th three probably maybe five and three five and a half by three um roughly again it's not an exact on that size um we've also used 
Distress Oxides in Squeeze Lemonade, Festive Berries, Picked Raspberry, Carved Pumpkin and Twisted Citron. And the clean colour pens we've used today are, let's get these colours right, red, white, sorry, wine red even, mid green, pale green, yellow, light pink and scarlet red. And we have also used the Versafine Onyx Black Ink and Crystal Clear Embossing Powder along with our sticky glue. So I think we'll bring just bring this back in so you can have one more quick look at what we've done. Get it that way. So I think that's everything. Um, if anybody's got any questions or would like to see anything made particularly, please let us know. You can email us on honeydocrafts at gmail.com. Um, we do do Facebook Lives just before we go on TV each month. And they're available obviously on Facebook. Or if you're not on Facebook and you would like to still watch the Facebook Lives, you can go onto our Facebook page. No, onto our website page, www.honeydocrafts.co.uk. And along the very top, there's a button that says Facebook if you click on that, you can then click and watch the Facebook Live, but you don't have to be a Facebook subscriber and it won't register you. You just go on to watch what we're doing and that will show you all of everything that we've put on Facebook, all the photos and etc. etc. So I think that's everything. Um, have a lovely afternoon or a lovely week. Take care. Bye.